G'day gamers, Ranger Tony here with a Baldur's Gate tutorial video. So today I thought I'd just run through a little bit about creating a new character in Baldur's Gate. So this this could be a little bit different from other games that you've played, more recent games. Um, the Neverwinter Nights series, for example, Pathfinder Kingmaker, a lot of the stuff that I have on my channel. Um, because Baldur's Gate is designed around a much earlier version of the D&D rule set. Uh, but there are some things that are common. So, for example, the very first thing is you get to pick your gender, and it's pretty straightforward, uh, male or female. Doesn't chew, doesn't affect anything to do with your uh, character. You can't not be certain... Uh, things as male or female. Uh, then, strangely enough, you pick your portrait next. This is before you've chosen your race. It seems a little strange to me. It even seemed a little strange back in the day. Um, and I've talked in other videos before where I feel that before you choose your race or your uh, or things like that, you should actually choose your class. I believe class is the first thing you should choose. But there is a reason why, in particular, in Baldur's Gate, you don't. And that is, is that some races are very, very limited in what classes they can be. Um, so I'm just, there are a bunch of standard uh, portraits here. And you can, it gives you instructions on what to do to, to load your own custom one in. Um, I'm just going to go back to the first default one here because we're not, trying to do anything special. Um, the the confusing thing on this screen is don't click custom, click click done, or don't click the portrait, click done to, to go on. Um, and it is a little confusing. You have to, to go to your next step here. You have to click on race to select your race and do that in each of the steps. So it's a little bit confusing first time around. Now, as far as race goes, I very much recommend that you click on each of the races and read the descriptions that go there. So humans in Baldur's Gate have no advantages or disadvantages, but you'll note they mention here that they cannot multi-class, but they can dual class. I'll explain this in a second. Elves. Elves, um, they get a 90% res resistance against charm and sleep. They have Infravision. They get a plus one bonus with bows, short swords, and long swords. They get um, minus 5% to open locks, but plus 5% to pick pockets, plus 5% to move silently, and plus 10% to hide in shadows. So if they want to go down the thievish route, they have some advantages. Um, and they get a plus one to dexterity, but a minus one to constitution. Half elves, much shorter list of stuff, just 30% resistant to sleep and charm, whereas elves were 90% resistance. They get their infravision and they get some bonuses to pickpocket and hide in shadows. Dwarves, dwarves get um, some save throw bonuses, they get infravision, they get some bonuses to some thieving abilities, they get a plus one to constitution a minus one to dexterity and a huge minus two to charisma, which is really quite uh, disheartening at that stage for dwarves in this game. Um, halflings, they get bonuses to some save throws. They get a plus one bonus when attacking with slings. They get bonuses to a lot of the thieving abilities. Plus one to dex, minus one to strength, minus one to wisdom. And then gnomes get plus, t they get saving throw bonuses, they get improvision, they get some bonuses to various thieving abilities, plus one to intelligence, minus one to wisdom. Now, those are the original races that you could play. The enhanced edition added the half orc. They just get improvision, plus one to strength, plus one to constitution, minus two to intelligence. So now, once we've chosen one of these races, um, we will be able to choose our class. But I said I'd mention the difference between dual classing and multi-class. So if I go and pick an elf here, for example, and click on class, 
we can see here that I can be a fighter, a ranger, a cleric, a mage, a thief, or a sorcerer, but I can also be a fighter mage, a fighter thief, a fighter mage thief, or a mage thief. This is called multi-classing. And what it is, is you are both a fighter and a mage at the same time. And you will level up in both at the same time. But because each class has different experience points requirements to proceed in a level, you will find that you will probably get, say, the fighter level first, and then a little bit later on, you'll get the mage level. But if you compared yourself to a character that was a pure fighter or a pure mage, they are going to level up quicker than you are because you're spreading XP over two or sometimes three classes as opposed to your XP going to just the one class if you picked fighter. So all of the non-human races, elf, half-elf, dwarf, halfling, gnome, and half-orc, can all multi-class. Humans cannot, but what humans can do is they can dual class. Now, if you've played games like Neverwinter Nights 1 and 2 or uh, Pathfinder Kingmaker, and you've seen a lot of other people's builds, I generally don't do this, but if you see a lot of other people's builds that they put up where they take X levels of one class and then Y levels of another class and then Z levels of another class and then A levels of another class to build up this ultimate character, right? You cannot do that in Baldur's Gate. In the D&D 2 rules that this is based on, humans could only dual class, which means you start as one class, you go to a second class, and then you that's it. You can't go back to the first class, and you can't go to a third class or a fourth class or anything like that. You're very, very limited. Having said that, you still progress a lot quicker than a class that is multi-classing because you're not spreading XP amongst two or more classes. So let me give you an example. I play a human, I start off as a fighter, and I then I gain experience and I get to the end of first level fighter, I'm ready to proceed. I can continue as a fighter and go to and take my second level of fighter, or I can choose to pick another class. And you can do this at any time. Alright? So let's, okay, as an example, let's say we'll go to level two. Once I've got the experience to go to level three, I decide that I'm not going to play a fighter anymore. I want to play a mage. And if I have the requirements to do that, if I have enough intelligence, I can then dual class and pick mage now. So I will then be a first level mage. Now, I cannot use any skills or abilities or anything that I had from the fighter that couldn't be used by the mage at that point. So if as a fighter I had taken longsword, I was using heavy armor um, and things like that, I wouldn't be able to use that when I then became a mage. I would have to stick to majorly weapons and no armor, right? But once my mage exceeds the level that I was as a fighter, I can then start to use some of the abilities previously, right? So actually, the better example is take take. Imowen, the the thief that you can play in, or that can join your party in this game. She is actually designed, and a lot of people do this, so that she can become a mage. So she is a thief, but she has a very high intelligence. So the idea is, to get the most benefit out of her, it's recommended that you take her up to 6th level thief. And once she's got enough experience to go to level 7, you instead make her a mage. So she becomes a thief a first level mage at that point. She doesn't lose her existing hit points or anything like that, 
but she only now gains hit points as a mage, not as a thief. And she cannot use any of her thief abilities, such as pick locks, hide in shadows, any of that. She can't do any of that until she also gets to level 6 mage. Once she's past level 6 mage, she is now able to use both her magic and her thief skills at any time. She can never increase her thief skills. She can't go back and say, okay, I'm now a level 6 rogue, level 9 mage, and I'm about to go to another level. Oh, I'm going to go back and put another level of thief in? No, you can't do it. So you basically say, I'm no longer going to gain any more experience as a thief. I'm going to go and dedicate myself to being a mage from now on. I can still use some of those abilities once I catch up in my magely skill to the level that I was with my thieving skills. And then from then on, I can use both sets of skills, but I can never improve as the first class. So that's the difference between the two. Dual classing, one class to a certain level, switch to, to a second class only, and use that class's abilities only until you reach the same level as the first class, and then you continue going up levels in your second class, but you can use the abilities from the first class. Or you can be a non-human, and you can be a multi-class character where you level up two or sometimes three classes at the same time in those those classes so you will just do it a lot slower um, in some of the actual rule books it would actually show you and tell you that oh you can only get to level x as say a fighter mage or a mage thief or something like that because there's just no way that you can gain enough experience ever to get beyond that so if for example you took the example that um a lot of games used level 20 as the maximum you could get to. So uh, that's in a, in a single class. You could say, like, you'd only get to level 20 as that, but it might only be that you could get to level, say, 12 or 14 as a fighter mage because there was just no way you could get... That would be the same amount of experience points as it would be for a level 20 fighter sort of thing. So that's all of that. I'm going to pick um, human... In this case, while we go forward and have a look at all the classes, because humans have access to every class, and then I'll come back uh, a little bit and talk about some of the unique um, other things. Um, so, the, one of the things that was brought in in the enhanced edition was these uh, subclasses. So, the main classes are fighter. Uh, you know, you're designed to to hit things. Um, don't forget you can build a fighter as a melee or a ranged fighter. Um, so even though... So the prime requisite for dual classing is strength, and that's actually a little bit of a problem. You have to have... There is a minimum value. I think you have to have at least 13. Um, did it say it back here in the race? Let me just double check. Um, no, it doesn't say, but there is a limit. Uh, you, have, you do have to have a certain amount of... Um, points in the uh, particular prime requisite so that you can dual class to that. So if I if I took, say, Thief first and then wanted to switch to Fighter, if my Thief didn't have at least 13 points in strength, they wouldn't be able to do that. It could be 15, I can't remember, but it's, yeah, it's not like t 10, which is usually considered to be the baseline. Ranger is... A very cut-down version of the ranger that you might know from other games. You don't, for example, have an animal companion, but you do have this charm animal ability, and you can only ever select a single racial enemy, whereas uh, a lot of more recent games allow you to select multiple over time. So you pick initial one, and then a few la la levels later, you can pick another one. Uh, that sort of thing. Um, and you had a bit more of the thieving sort of abilities, you know, hide in the shadows and stuff. I suppose they are, they are in some other games as well. So, yeah. Uh, druidic spells at level eight, uh, whereas later games just stick with clerical spells. They don't really separate spells into cleric and druid, uh, though they did here at this point. And if you wanted to dual class 
a ranger, you would have to, into a ranger, you'd need strength, dexterity, and wisdom uh, prime requisites for that. Paladin is pretty much your straight standard paladin. Although your lay on hands ability is very small at only two hit points per level, it adds up, but still it's only like 20 hit points at level 10, um, whereas a cleric can do a lot better than that. Um, and you do get clerical spells, but not until level 9, whereas a lot of the other games, more recent games, you get that at like level 3 or 4. Um, you must be lawful good. Also, um, rangers must be good. And I actually approve of this. I don't like the idea of rangers not being good. In particular, I don't like evil rangers. I think it's ridiculous. Uh, clerics are pretty much your standard cleric Um there's no real restrictions, although some of the more recent games allowed clerics to have, to only use light or medium armor and not heavy armor, but at this point they were allowed heavy armor, so you can be wearing full plate as a cleric. Druids are allowed to wear any non-metallic armor, which basically limits them to light or medium. I think hide is the heaviest non-metallic armor. Uh, the non-metallic armor, I don't think it includes the um, Ankeg plate, but I'm not entirely sure. The idea behind this wearing non-metallic armor is the fact that they get the ability to shapeshift at level 7, and if you are wearing any any metallic armor, you lose that ability. It doesn't explicitly tell you that, but I'm pretty sure if you dual class or multi-class, because you can multi-class as a druid, um, you will do that. Now, of note, you can't multi-class as a, a paladin, um, I believe, and only elves or half-elves can multi-class as ranger. Only humans can be paladins, basically, is part of the thing. Um, so we had druid, mage, pretty stock standard. Um, they very much limit you on both weapons and the weapon slot proficiencies but apart from that you're fine thieves the biggest thing that you'll notice about thieves as opposed to what you have seen in other games is that they don't have the sneak attack that was that came out in D&D version 3 they have this backstab and it you it's very hard to use you must be stealthy you must be behind the opponent um, and it only gives you a multiplier to the damage it doesn't give you instead the the uh, sneak attacks, extra hit dice, um, or extra damage dice. You can set traps. I've never really used it. Uh, I find that sort of thing very hard to use in most games. Um, bards are another one that are not really uh, usable by human by non-humans. I think. I don't recall. We'll see in a sec, though. Um, but also, I, I don't recall any of them being able to multi-class as bard. Um, you're restricted to only being neutral alignment as a bard, which is an interesting choice. Um, I sort of understand the ideas behind it, but, you know, I like the idea of a good bard as well. I mean, I, I play good, so, you know, there is that. Um, sorcerer... Um, very much like the sorcery you are used to. Monk is new for the enhanced edition and they try to, you know, fit in the monk. It doesn't work very well in my opinion in this game, but, um, you know, it's something to play around with if you like that. And then the shaman. The shaman is supposed to be, and this was, I think, brought in to be used by the half-orcs more than anything because half-orcs can multi-class into shaman as well. Uh, you know, fight a shaman and things like that. So it's meant to be, I don't know, like they're saying here that it's a shaman's uh, similar to druids, but more primal. And it's like, I see druids as being pretty damn primal, man. I mean, they're not clerics. So I don't know. But uh, yeah, so that's there. Uh, I have not played around with shaman at all. Neither have I really played around with the monk. But those are the classes. Now, each class has a number of kits or subclasses. If you've seen Pathfinder Kingmaker, this is the archetype idea. So you get the first class up here, fighter, exactly as it was, and then you get variations on it. 
Um, the Berser- I don't understand the difference really between the Berserker and the Barbarian. The Barbarian has rage, as does the Berserker. Um, I don't see why they put both of them in. Um, I just feel like it's a bit weird. Um, I like the Wizard Slayer. I think the idea of uh, chances to cause spell failure on your targets when you hit them and the innate magic resistance that you have is good. Uh, the Kensai is like the um, Sword Saint from Pathfinder Kingmaker, except you don't have magic. Um, so you're not a Magus. You're just a fighter who cannot use armor. Um, and But it's sort of like, a little bit like the um, Weapon Master Prestige class that was in Neverwinter Nights 1 and 2. So the idea here is is that you are an absolute master in weapons. You can't use armor. You can't use missile weapons. You can't wear gauntlets or braces. So, you know, you can wear a helmet and a belt and boots. And that's about it. So if you want anything... And rings. So if anything to protect you, you're limited to those. Um, I have tried playing this class. It is incredibly hard. um, Because you just get killed all the time now while it says you cannot use missile weapons there is one little way around that um if you take well you don't have to even take proficiency in daggers a throwing dagger for some reason is allowed to be used by the kensai at least the last time i played with it it was whether that's changed or not i don't know if you've if you've got more recent experience than me let me know in the comments um Rangers have a few kits. If you've seen my playthrough, I play the Archer. They are dedicated Archer only. That's all they do. Um, So they can go up to five slots in longbow, shortbow, or crossbow. Um, And they get a called shot ability. Uh, This guy will do more damage with a bow or a missile weapon than any other character in the game, hands down. Even a straight fighter spec as archer will not do as much damage as this guy will um mostly because of the cold shot um but also he just gets a plus one to hit and damage with missile weapons every three levels so no matter what you do this is going to be the best missile damage character you can create stalkers are designed to be a little bit more like thieves and they're better at hiding and stealth and stuff like that and they get the backstab ability and the Beastmaster can summon a familiar and also cast animal summoning. So it's not quite the ranger that we're used to from the more modern games. But, you know, it's something a little bit different. The Paladins have a, a few interesting subclasses here. The Cavalier is definitely an interesting one because the Cavalier was uh, a race... Uh, uh, sorry, a class originally that was a subclass of fighter, not of paladin. Um, And they can't use missile weapons either uh, in this game, but they're designed to attack fiends and dragons, uh, basically. Inquisitors are um, a bit like the Inquisitor from Pathfinder Kingmaker, really. Um, Although a very simple early version of that. Um, They don't get a lot of those spells and abilities, but that's sort of what they were aiming for. The Undead Hunter, I think, is really good. Um, Just getting those bonuses against Undead makes them better than a Cleric at handling Undead, in my opinion. And then the the Black Guard is your anti-Paladin, an evil Paladin. Um, Clerics have... These subclasses are really just priests of the various faiths, and all they really get are some simple little uh, abilities that they can cast each day and um you know some alignment restrictions and and things like that so they're nothing spectacular from the priest point of view the druids yeah these ones are interesting as well like the totemic druid sounds a lot like what maybe the shaman is shapeshifters allow them to shapeshift even more than a normal druid so they can become a werewolf 
uh, or Greater Werewolf, and then the Avenger is starting to get into a bit of a cross between a Druid and a Mage. Haven't played around with any of those. The Mage subclasses are really just, uh, apart from the Wild Mage, they are Mages of the different schools of magic. The Wild Mage, uh, I really don't like this idea. Uh, they get an extra spell per level and there's a couple of unique spells that they get but they get this wild surge thing that means that randomly when you cast a spell it could just do anything and I hate that I really do Um, Thief all of these are really bad in my opinion like assassins have to be evil bounty hunters isn't too bad but I've said I don't really like the the traps mechanics in any of the games that I've played so I I probably would never do this one the swashbuckler um, tries to be a little bit like the swashbuckler from Neverwinter Nights 2 and the shadow dancer there is shadow dancers in some of the more recent games but I've never really liked the idea of them the bards, these ones are a little bit strange. Um, so bards normally are sort of, uh, yeah, standard bard, but the blade here is a little bit better at being a fighting bard, you know, a melee fighting bard. I, I don't know why you'd play a jester. And then the skald is supposed to be a Nordic, uh, you know, like a Viking bard. That's actually not too bad, some of the abilities you get there, because the songs are a little bit different. Uh, They're more dedicated around combat, uh, at improving damage rolls and and AC and and debuffing the same on your opponents. So, you know, that's not too bad, but I don't really like it all that much. Sorcerer really just has the Dragon Disciple, which has been around for a while, um, where you can basically start to become a dragon and, and you get all these breath weapons and claws and all that sort of fun stuff the monk uh just has a couple of different uh types of monk a dark and a light one really um very restrictive not sure that they're all that useful and then the shaman again is sorry the, the shaman is a little bit weird as well it has no subclass though so it's just you're a shaman or you're not so if i really quickly uh, go back and pick, uh, say, Elf, for example. The options here then end up being Fighter Mage, Fighter Thief, Fighter Mage, Thief, and Mage Thief. And that's not the same for all of the class, all of the races. Um, you know, half elves can be a lot more than standard elves, but they are standard elves, but they can also do things like cleric ranger, which a normal elf can't do. Um, unfortunately, things like halfling are very restricted. It's really just fighter cleric or thief, and then fighter thief is their only multi-class option. Even dwarves are a little bit restricted. Um, it's fighter cleric or fighter thief. Uh, gnomes are just as badly off as well not as bad as halflings but um, they're restricted as far as magic to the illusionist school only which was very weird and I never really liked that Um, and then the half orc um, can be you know fighter cleric thief or shaman and then you know some combinations thereof but they can't be multi-classed as shaman something either let's pick a um an elven fighter mage thief just for something really different um alignment you have your choices of alignment now you'll notice here that lawful good isn't there because i have picked fighter mage thief and thieves can't be lawful good that is what it is but that's fine i don't mind picking chaotic good Abilities. This is where it gets really interesting, and this is where you will spend the most of your time. Now, what basically happens here is these are some rolls that have been done. The idea was is that it rolls. Generally, you roll three six-sided dice, add them up. That's your value. Some systems, you roll four and pick the best three. But you roll three six-sided dice, get the value, and they go into here. Now, 
you can at any point say, yeah, I'm happy with, I'm reasonably happy with those figures and store them and, and recall them again later. But the idea is, is that what you want to do is you want to create a character and you've got this total role here and that is wonderful because you look at it and go 80, no, nah, that's nothing. I want at least a 90. So you click re-roll and you keep clicking re-roll until you get something that you like. Um, and you'll notice here, oh, 93, there you go. So that's quite a good, uh, quite a good roll. And what we'll see here is if I'm playing a fighter mage thief, I'm going to want uh, strength, dexterity, and intelligence as my three main scores. So I can do this and I can actually take that to 19. Um, and I've got eight points left now that I can put anywhere. So I'm probably gonna put those all into constitution. Actually, I might go to there with constitution. I've got two left and let me just put those into say charisma. Right, so I'm happy with that store. And if I wanted to, I could keep re-rolling. Now, I haven't done the math on this. I actually saw someone post a Reddit post the other day where they had a total of like 108. I have never seen anything over about a 96. To even get that 93 was that quickly was exceptional. Um, you can keep re-rolling until the cows come home, until you're happy. And like anyone who's played this game will have probably done it. I have literally sat here for hours just clicking the re-roll button, waiting for a number. And you, you'll get there and you'll click really fast. And you'll think, yeah, I can stop when I see it's something in the 90s. And you'll just click past one and you'll go, oh, damn it, I missed it. And you'll, you'll keep going and keep going. Because you go, look, 93 isn't enough. I wanted to have I wanted to have 18 in this and I wanted to have 18 in this. It's really hard to, to get your scores exactly what you want. Keep re-rolling until you try or go and find a cheat way of doing it. I know there's some out there. I don't, I don't look at them. I don't care about them. But I know that they're out there, right? Once you're happy with your role, though, I've recalled that role. I'm happy with that. You can click done and you can go on. You need to set up your skills. Now, these skills here are only there if you are a thief. And, you know, those are the skills that a thief gets. Pickpocket, open locks, find traps, move silently, hide in shadows, detect illusion, set traps. Now, really, it's up to you how you go there with a thief, what you want to do. But if you want to get the most out of your thief early game, just pump all 40 points you've got into open locks and you will not find a single lock early in the game that you can't open, which means every chest that you find in Candlekeep and stuff like that, you will be able to open and loot and get the most money to the most effect. Whether you get caught for opening somebody else's chest that you shouldn't have opened is another story but that's the way it works. Now, proficiency slots. This is only for weapons. And depending on the classes that you've picked will greatly affect what you can do here. So if we had have just picked mage, for example, we would only have dagger, quarterstaff, dart, and sling. And that would be it. There'd be nothing else there because you can't pick any of these styles these, these weapon styles, and those are the only weapons that you can pick as a mage. As a fighter, we get access to everything. If I picked just a plain thief, we would have short sword, we would have, I think, scimitar, wezakashi, najitu, whatever it is, dagger, club, uh, crossbow, short bow, dart, sling, and single weapon, Actually, I don't even know if you get single weapon style. I can't remember. But you wouldn't get all four of these. Um, and then you can allocate points to each of these. So, for example, if I'm going to play a two-handed sword fighter, whether I'm going to use a two-handed sword or whether I'm going to use a spear or a halberd or a quarterstaff, any of those melee weapons that I'm going to use in two hands, then it's probably worthwhile me putting a couple of points in there. And you see here, it tells you what abilities you get. So when I put one point in, I get a plus one bonus of damage, minus two to my speed factor, and 19 and 20 score critical hits rather than, than just 20. So this game is a little bit different with the weapons. Later, later, weapon, later games had different weapons, had different 
critical hit uh, chances. This one, it's your skill, which improves it. And I actually like that a lot. I think that's a good thing in some ways. Um, and then when you get to specialized, you can do that. Now, I think all of these, you can only really get two slots in. Um, or you can get three slots in two weapon style. Um, but in all of the weapons, you can actually get up to five slots in them. And so at, at five slots, you are getting a plus three to hit, a plus five to damage, a minus three speed factor, and an extra attack per round with the selected weapon. Um, and that'll take you a long time to get because you don't get these new points very often. But if you were going to specialize as a two-handed sword fighter, for example, that was what I would recommend you do. Pick, just max it out. Now, if you're going for a, a, a ranged character, an archer of some sort, then max out your longbow. And then what do you do with the other two points? Well, either pick a backup weapon, right? So let's say longsword and put one point in that and then decide whether you're going to use a shield with that or you're going to use it by itself, or maybe you're going to use it two, two long swords. But if you're going to use it by itself, pick the single weapon style. If you're going to use it with a shield, pick the shield and weapon style. Now, you don't need to do that, but if you do, you get some extra little bonuses. So your shield is even more um, efficient. So you're actually getting some protection against missile weapons. Without it, you don't get any protection against missile weapons uh, sort of thing. So this one here, you just get, um, a bonus to AC and you get you know better criticals when you're doing single weapons and stuff like that so that is that this video is going a long time so I'm, I'm going to keep this reasonably short but this is how you pick your uh, mage spells um, so you this has already picked um, two spells for me friends and protection from evil I would never normally pick either of those um, but I can unclick them and choose to learn something else. Uh, most of these spells are very similar to what you would have seen in other games. There are no zero level spells. There are no cantrips in this game. Um, so be aware of that. Um, so things like blindness, which previously would have been a cantrip, uh, are not cantrips anymore. Um, so yeah, be aware of that. You know, But the standard spells are the really good ones. Magic Missile... Lolox Minor Drain. Uh, Grease isn't too bad if you can get it off properly. You'll probably want to identify, identify at some point, although you do get law points. Um, but, you know, you might not be doing all that good. And Armor is a, is a good spell uh, for a mage as well. So I might just pick that and say Magic Missile. Uh, and then which ones are we going to memorize for the day? We can only really memorize one, so we'll do Magic Missile. Actually, we'll do armor because we're playing a multi-class. And then you can select your appearance. Um, it's actually really hard to find the colors that you want because I look at the see. Okay, that's green there. So I try and get over that green. And, oh, yeah, okay. Actually, these colors aren't, they aren't too bad. It's these ones here that are really hard to find because the, the slithers are so small. So if I want, say, that brown there, trying to get it, is it is it that one or is it that one? I think it was that one, but it's so hard to tell because this slider is so thick and these are so thin. But you pick whatever you want. You go, done. Same with every other game. There's all these voices. For some reason, the default voice... Onward. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, but then there's a whole bunch of female voices and then male underneath. Now, it knows I'm male, so why doesn't it just give me all the male voices? Now, look, if you want to play it that way, if you want to be male but use a female voice, that's fine. And I suppose it gives you that option. Um, it just seems a little strange. And then finally, you give yourself a name. Name. Well, if I can type correctly, name. And done. And you're ready to go. You go accept and you'll be in the game. So that's building a character. Um, it Really, I would recommend, particularly when you get to race and class, read what each of the things say. You will spend a fair bit of time building your first character. I reckon I would say the average person who's never played this before, if you want to go in and start a character, it is probably going to take you at least an hour between reading about races, reading about the classes, rolling up your ability, re-roll, re-roll, re-roll until you get values that you like and then shifting everything around and then choosing your skills and your appearance. 
it'll be easy an hour. Um, and as I've said, if you're if you're aiming for particular ability points, I have sat there at times for multiple hours just clicking reroll, trying to get the values that I want. Um, I don't recommend it as a good way to spend your evening. The, the really good thing is that the game has the ability to pre-generate characters. So you can sit down and pre-generate these one time and then take a break and come back later and pick up your, that character and give it a try and play it. Um, and, you know, you can import one even there that you'd previously built. And there's some that they give you um, as examples, which are good places to start as well. So I hope this was informative. Um, sorry that the video took so long. Uh, my other ones will not be, but I tried to squeeze it all into this one uh, video. I may do some more very specific build videos. I don't know. This game doesn't lend itself as much to specific build videos as other games because you don't get as many, like you don't really get a huge number of feats and things like that as you progress in the game. You really just get the ability to increase either your your thief abilities or pick new weapons proficiencies and stuff like that you don't get the, the range of uh, feats that you do with a lot of other games so it's really not that worthwhile showing you the builds that i do for a lot of these characters because it's really just well get your stats as high as you can in the in the skills in the you know, abilities that you need for that particular class and just go for it and, and you're done sort of thing so hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a like and share it with your friends. Be sure, be sure to subscribe to keep up to date with all the latest episodes, and I will see you for the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye.